Are we on the principal reports? Good evening. Uh, some of the people's, people were uh, already mentioned, but I want to reiterate the winter concert this year. Uh, the evening concert was by far the most uh, most attended concert I've ever had here at Evergreen. And I really want to thank Kathy Taylor, Kristen Primer, uh, Emily Brown, and Joanne Nelson for their flexibility. We had to make some adjustments in the scheduling of performance because we had to clear some people out of our gymnasium. We had the bleachers full, we had the seats full, we had the entranceway full, and the hallway was filling up. Uh, so I was worried about fire codes, and we made some very quick, flexible uh, adjustments in the program. It went off very well, and uh, I'm very appreciative for their flexibility, as well as to the parent cooperation. Uh, Mr. Heath had mentioned the Slate Conference. Evergreen took three teachers, Brenda Pendleton, Nikki Kravchek, and Sarah Eggers, with a focus on uh, the introduction to utilization of the iPad in uh, the lower elementary grades. I attended most of the breakout sessions with them. A couple were more administrative-oriented. Uh, but one piece that we walked away with and we're going to meet as a team on Friday it's an accountability piece. Uh, I know that Mr. Byro uh, wanted to, to look at the evidence of how effective the implementation was. And we have a templated format for that. And we're going to talk about uh, measuring uh, student performance with the introduction to the iPad. And we'll be happy to report that as we move forward with this initiative. Uh, Jane Pollock was in the district almost two weeks ago. Uh, our sixth grade teacher, teachers, Brenda Servi, Kristen Netset, and uh, Aaron Kopp, uh, attended with the hope of bridging uh, any gap between what our expectations are at the sixth grade level with what takes place at Fox River. Seventh and eighth grade teachers were there as well. There were some very strong discussions that went on that I think will help prepare our kids that much better for the transition to Fox River. Uh, Mrs. Ketterhagen and Mrs. Wagner have made it a point this year in third grade to work on our language art skills and have been putting together different pieces of formative assessment to take place within the classes. And we are going to uh, do our winter maps testing in January and building-wide, district-wide, is going to be reading and map However, we're going to try to get third grade language arts assessed so we can see how well our formative assessment pieces are matching up with a more summative assessment. And then finally, we continue our work on the internet. It, it, uh, the INI notebooks. Uh, and our fourth grade has really taken some leadership on that with Kristen Stott, Kate Gratchett, and Tom Bodner. And also, uh, Jane Pollock uh, had an after school discussion of the interactive notebooks. And our first grade teacher, Donna Colian, was there as well. So we're kind of hitting it from our intermediate grades as well as our primary grades. And then as I discussed before, with our upper elementary grades. Uh, so that's it, that's my script. We're our every year. Are there any questions? You said one the interactive yeah. notebook you're discussing. Is that um, an app on the Apple or one to be utilized on the No, when, uh, when we talk about the interactive notebook, it can actually be a paper pencil notebook. We're talking about the kids putting together a notebook with teacher input, with student input, and keeping track of what the lessons are from day to day, what the goals are from day to day, and what the expectations are from day to day. Some teachers, I don't know, uh, they don't have to speak to whether or not they're doing utilizing technology, but for the most part, it's been paper pencil uh, type formatting and uh, Jane Pollock is a strong proponent of that. So at any given time, I can walk into a classroom and the students will have their notebooks out and I can go up to a student and say, ask them what they're doing. And you know, the typical answer of who uh, has disappeared and it's very specified as to what they're doing, what the expectations are, and what the outcomes are. So although the terminology interactive notebook does sound technology related, it can be people. The only reason I say that is I and I don't know, Darlene, are you guys utilizing some technology component? I don't know. Oh, yeah, I hope it's on laptops. I'm going to 
Well, we we have used uh, the uh, internet. We've used the laptops for our um, I and I notebooks. Uh, we've got a little bit more to pay for this year, just so that the uh, the students need to box their thoughts. That's really what the interactive notebook is, is for the students to produce their evidence of their learning. The teacher is able to cruise right around, take a look, we highlight them, it's called that box of thought. So by having that on a piece of paper, it allows the teacher to see the vocabulary, the thinking skills that are taking place as opposed, and then they're using their laptop for the research, finding things, getting the images, um, Googling out things like that. So we've got the two going hand in hand. We have used the technology piece, but right now with the split screens and some of the things, just a little more creativity that the kids need, we just are back at the paper piece of this year for that piece alone because it's just as easy for the teacher to see. The kids write their goals, they chart where their learning process is, they evaluate before they're gonna start the lesson. At the end they chart how they learn on a scale of one to four. The teacher can see that right there, the goals right there. The, the one side is the student side, another side is the teacher side. The teacher side is where the, new, the, the kids take the notes for the new information, and then they're doing something with the information on the other side, and that's where, where, where the thinking skills, our teachers are learning about the different thinking skills that are taking place, the vocabulary development, it's all right in that area for the teacher to just view as they move around the room. So as much as we're using the technology, Dan, we're probably hand in hand using the images, the Google sites, the research right here, why we're doing the interactive piece on the paper. Although some areas are using the computer. Yeah, because obviously we want to get back to the point of having all the scraps of paper all over the place again. Well, and that's the other beauty of this is there isn't the scraps of paper because if the kids have their notebook and it's very organized, the date is here. Some teachers have the kids have a table of contents where you can go back. Um, actually, I've got a, a sheet. I can send it out. I'm going to be sending you guys an email tomorrow. I'll just tell you why in a few minutes. But I can send an attachment to you of what the I and Nine note look, looks like for a kid of sample. So I can I can shoot you off that an email tomorrow for uh, lack of time right now. Okay. And I can visit with you later if you want on that. And one of one of the things, uh, as Kelly said, it, it's a very organized process. I've seen it as as low as I, I would comfortable showing you as low as second grade. I remember first grade are still kind of working with the organizational pieces. But the, when we say I and I notebooks work, we're talking about interactive notebooks and then the number nine refers to the nine strategies um, that Dr. Marzano has proven are the most effective strategies for student learning. So that's kind of the background of the acronym. But I'm very impressed with the organizational skills. And I mentioned our fourth grade is really taking the lead on that. Um, and it, it's making for a very organized uh, component to the students when they're coming home with these interactive notebooks, uh, speaking as both a, a, an administrator and a parent, you can tell, you know, almost verbatim what that student covered during the day, what their input was, and as Darlene said, what the teacher's input was. So I'm, I'm seeing a lot of good things as a result of the interactive notebooks. And I was going to add one more comment that uh, in my building, so each month we have a, a meeting with staff on interactive notebooks and everybody brings their different notebooks and we share um, what uh, what are some of the best things, what are some challenges, and then looking for how we're aligned across the grade levels so we have great and fantastic discussions. And tonight I was just going to recognize uh, Paul Mast and Becky Inda because after Jane Pollock was here and they had sat through the meetings, they brought back some really great information about the staff meeting on uh, sharing uh, um, and uh, leading us to um, ways we can improve, things that uh, Jane reminds us of doing that we listened to her back in June, but now when you're putting things in practice, um, she helped us to uh, take a look at this, think again about this, so that was very good, and especially to emphasize the thinking skills and uh, that we're working with with students, because that's an interactive part. What is your thinking about this? Here's a lot of information, but what are your thoughts about it? Summarize it, put it together, so they help to lead those meetings. And then I wanted to uh, thank the fifth grade teachers tonight, Mrs. Krieger, Mrs. Dietzik, and uh, Mrs. Creighton. And last time I talked about biography dash that they were doing, but when one sees um, all the writing that's involved in, in uh, the project, and it's just um, it's just great to see because their students are working on writing, and sometimes that becomes one of the things that uh, is not, uh, uh, shall I 
to say um, it's challenging sometimes to get students to be writers and to write with great purpose and with the biography bash of just seeing all the writing that the students are doing and putting their thoughts together in the interviewing process and summarizing and good writing, um, which is good to see. And then I, um, with music, um, besides the other three music teachers that Chris had mentioned with band and orchestra, I also want to thank Mrs. Canales, it's her first year in the the Whitfield building, but again, we had a full house, a, a great concert by her, and uh, yeah, it, it was full for us too, but it was it was good. It was good to see all the varieties of music from the band, fifth grade to the band, sixth grade, to the orchestra, to the chorus, to all the group singing. There was a, a lot of musical talent that evening. And then uh, lastly, I do want to uh, thank there are three teachers in my building also, uh, Kathy Earhart, D Diane Schultz, and Megan Geary, who um, are working on rolling out the uh, uses of the iPad. They also attended the conference, and then today, thank you, Mr. D, uh, they were given uh, their, their first iPad, and we're working with Mrs. Shucky uh, to start with the rollout of that and, uh, and their own learning. So they are working on still about uh, close to the end of February on their own learning and uh, things they could do before we roll it out to the students. So uh, that was great learning.